this is. Um, so, okay, it, it is Saturday morning at about 5.39 a.m. Pacific, and I'm streaming now not because I'm trying to gather an audience, but just because I'm trying to write a blog post. And during the quarantines, I'm starting to show y'all what I'm doing just behind the scenes. Anytime I can do something that's kind of public and I don't need to hide, I'm just starting to live stream this stuff. So the thing that I want to work on this morning is I want to write a blog post. I know, right? It's Saturday morning at like 5, you know, 39 a.m. And here I am writing blog posts. But my usual routine is on the weekends before my wife wakes up, I'll go through and spend that time writing blog posts. Because it's in the morning I feel usually the most creative, the most capable of typing and uh, sketching out long stories. Um, yes, I have a hat on. It's not because I haven't taken a shower yet. I actually did take a shower. I, got, I get up at like 3 a.m. Uh, but I'm having a really bad hair day because I decided not to use product because I'm kind of low on product and usually I would get that from the person who does my hair, but of course that's not happening right now. So had it is. So the blog post that I want to write about is uh, how do you analyze the balance of reads versus writes in a database? Sometimes I hear people think that their database is read heavy, sometimes they think it's write heavy, and they're just going off of feel based on what they think their users are doing. Another thing I've seen people trying to do is use the DMVs that track what you do with files, like uh, the DMIO virtual file stats. Well, the problem with analyzing a database via files is that when you do that, you're disregarding all the reads that are done from cache. Whenever, we, like we talk about in How to Think Like the Engine, whenever SQL Server can just pull data pages out of cache and use them to satisfy your query, those are reads too, even though they're not hitting storage. So I want to write a blog post that kind of talks about that. And whenever I start to write a blog post, the way that I usually try to do it is I start to try to start with the demo queries because I want to start with the demo queries that are going to tell a story. And by the time I get to the end of it, I'm going to have a nice punchline. Sometimes I discover as I'm writing through the blog post or as I'm mentally coming up with all the things in the blog post, I'll miss something that's really important to teach people. So by doing the code, showing what they think they know and then what actually is true down at the bottom, it'll help me map out that story when in a minute or several minutes, you're going to see me pop open WordPress and actually write the story. So let's start by digging into this. I got my SQL Server 29 instance. The instance doesn't really matter. The, there are a couple of DMVs that monitor uh, how many reads and writes you do, and they're done at the index level. So let's say select star from sys dmdb index usage stats. This is one of them. Now, there are two index uh, dynamic management objects. The other one is select star from sys dmdb index operational stats. But the problem with operational stats is that in order to use it, I got to pass in values. In this blog post, I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible. So one of the hardest things about writing blog posts is actually defining your scope, the things that you're going to teach an audience versus the things that you're not going to teach the audience. Inside the scope of one blog post, I'm not going to teach them the difference between these DMVs. I can't. It's too hard to convey in one blog post with everything else that I'm trying to teach them at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this DMV because I would have to explain the thing with put it passing in parameters. And instead, I'm going to stick with index usage stats because I don't need to pass any parameters. It'll be easier to tell the story. Now you see right off the bat when you do the select in here, user seeks and scans, lookups versus updates. So this is going to start giving me the ability to tell the story of whether they're doing more reads or more writes. So we're going to, at the beginning of this blog post, I'm going to show them this DMV, then I'm going to join it out to their tables so that they can run this same query up against their own items. So this is the first query that I'm going to run, is I'm going to show them this DMV. Second query that I'm going to run, Devendra says, hi, Bert, <laughs> or Bert, okay, that's interesting. My wife calls me Bert, but... It's because I have a unibrow and I was a tall, I'm kind of tall and when she met me I was tall and a good friend of mine was much shorter and he was wider so I was Bert and he was Ernie. That was what she called us. Uh, so um, that's the first query I'm going to run is I'm going to go show them sysdmdb index usage stats. The second query is I'm going to go join it out to their objects. So I'll say from sys, <laughs> Devendra says sorry Brent. It's okay, see you learned something about me. Um, now I'm going to start putting in, uh, uh, joining it out to their objects. So I'm going to call this US. 
join, so I need to give them, I need to make database ID and object ID mean something to them. So I'll say inner join sys databases db on us database ID equals db database ID, uh, inner join sys. Now when you get object ID, there are a few ways that you could get the name out of there. You could get, uh, there's an object name function. I could join to sys objects. Here, just to do it, I'm gonna join to sys objects. Oh, uh, actually I should, I'm gonna call this, yeah, I'll call this. So uh, on do, 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 us object ID equals O object ID. All right, so let's just make sure that we got what we're looking for so far. I'm gonna say, get me US, uh, we'll start with DB database name. Uh, we'll get the O, ob, the name of the object, whoopsie, name as table, well, uh, yeah, table name, uh, US user seeks. Well, and I'm gonna do some math on here. So I'm gonna start adding up user seeks, uh, plus user scans, plus user lookups as reads, reads. Uh, and then I'll also get user updates as writes. Okay, so this will just start to show what we're dealing with here. Execute that little thing. Oh, great. Uh, so our, obviously I've already got something wrong in terms of my joining there. Woohoo! that's kind of awesome. Uh, so if I have, so sys objects is probably, let's go get a quick look at select star from sys objects and make sure that it has what I think it has. All right, so this is, is MS ship tells you that something came from Microsoft. There is over here other, let's take it where, where is MS shipped equals zero and execute that little fella. Uh, so now we get badges, tags, posts, all of the things that I would expect uh, for, the, uh, for my uh, object names. Okay, so what am I doing wrong? What have I got over in sysdmdb index usage stats? Or what is it that's incorrect inside here? Let's start with just one row. Uh, we'll go back up to our top one. So database ID and object ID. So go give me select star from sysobjects where database, oops, there's no database there. Object ID equals, copy the number out, boom. That should be an and there. And paste. Uh, boom, there's nothing in there. Whoa, okay, awesome. So sysobjects isn't joining the way that I think it joins. So what is it inside of sysindex usage stats that this object ID refers to. Well, it's not the table, it's the freaking index, I think. I think it's gonna be, because of course this is the way that I'll go off and write, is I don't go look at the documentation, I'm just gonna try to remember off the top of my head, and I bet I misremember, misremembered that I bet object ID actually points to the index, not to the table. I don't know that though, look at that. Well, so let's do this. Let's go select star from sys objects. So we got the object ID. I'm gonna go pop over into master. I have a nasty feeling that, no, that's, I know that's not true. What am I screwing up here? Oh, you moron. No, that's not it either. Uh, da, 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 da. What am I screwing up here? All right, let's go pop, pop back out to books online and go look at what, let me grab this over here. So this, well, let's go look at what that object ID actually refers to. So object ID is the ID of the table or view on the end of what the index is defined. All right, so what did I screw up on here? So usage stats, object ID, sys objects. Oh, oh, let's try this. Uh, select star from sys objects where name equals posts. So this will give us the ID of the post table. Okay, so there's the post table where object ID equals boom. There's nothing in there. <laughs> okay, so there, the object IDs aren't matching up here between usage stats and objects. <sighs> this is not really what I wanted to write the blog post about. I like how Devendra's like, Devendra goes, I give up. What if we use object name instead of joining to sys objects? Okay, Devendra, let's try that. Let's do that. And I'm gonna be really bummed, and you know what's gonna happen? It's like five million people are gonna be screaming at the YouTube replay when they go back and watch. They're gonna be like, oh my God, how come uh, Brent isn't getting this? Um, so let's go get, uh, instead of this, we'll go object name, 
uh, o object ID as table name. And let's see how that works. Uh, ooh, ah, it's US, not O. US. Do, 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 do. MSDB. Oh, I love this. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so we're getting sysindex usage stats. What? Uh, am I without querying it? What? Inner join. Oh, how elegant is that? Um, Syst index DMDB index usage stats. What have I got inside here? Oh, it's only database ID 4, which is MSDB. So select star from sys databases. Oh, I love this as a lesson. Okay, the only data that's in index usage stats right now is for MSDB because I just booted up the SQL Server and I haven't actually done any work with it yet. Oh, this is a great, I think, I think that's what that is. I haven't done anything to put any of the other objects up in cache or query them yet. So let's go do that real quick. Select uh, star from DBO users where display name equals brand Ozark. Claudia says, uh, first time I've seen you live, do you remember me? I'm Cryptos who met you at SQL Bits in London a few years back. You met me once a few years back. Let me, let me replay that as if I was you. Hey, I bagged your groceries four years ago. Do you remember? No, of course I don't remember you. Now with a picture I might, if you were either really ugly or really attractive, maybe one of those two. But otherwise, or distinctive, right? Maybe that's the phrase that I should use. Um, so, uh, Vasilis says, oh, stress in play. Now, come on, really? When you're trying to write a blog post, because there's something I should have shown you too at the beginning. So what I usually do when I write a blog post or when I do any kind of really query tuning or focus work is I have this half hour hourglass on my desk. I'll take this half hour hourglass and I'll flip it to give myself a reminder that I've only got like 30 minutes of focus time before I probably need to pop off and do something else. Now I'm gonna dedicate about one hour in order to write this blog post, but there's just only so much that you can cover inside the span of one hour. Okay, so I've got this, uh, I'm gonna run this query a few times, go 10, just to get that query to run a few times. Then let's go up and run sysindex usage stats where database ID is anything other than four. Now I have data up in the cache. Okay, I don't know that I wanna teach the audience that inside the span of the blog post. So I'm probably gonna leave that out. I'm also gonna put this exact video on the blog post itself so people can see the work involved with writing a blog post. Okay, so now I'm back to having at least usable data inside here. And I'm gonna go back to putting my join on sys objects just because I think it's kind of a nice little uh, do, 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 O name as. Okay, there we go. And then execute that. Oh! Okay, great. Now we're getting a little further out. I also need to join the index ID because if you go back over to here, there is an index ID inside here. A table can, of course, have multiple indexes. So I'm gonna need to join over to indexes to show them the index that we're talking about too as well. So inner join sys indexes on I on, I'm gonna call that IX, on US, Database ID equals IX database. I, oops, no, it's not in there. Okay, so all I need is object ID equals IX object ID and uh, US index ID equals oh, do, 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 IX index ID. Uh, Claudia asks a question about uh, the future of NoSQL versus SQL Server. I'm gonna skip that one just because it's out of scope. Okay. So, uh, Herman says, I'm a fan of your way of presentation. Cool, thank you. Okay, so, oh, I also got to get the index name on here. So, IX name, perfect, as index name. All right, so now I've got, go execute that. So, now I've got the database, the table, the index, and the number of reads and writes that it has. 
This isn't necessarily strictly necessary for the blog post, but I want to be able to give this to people so that they understand they could go sort by these things and group them together if they wanted to go see which indexes are getting the most reads and writes, because that's going to be naturally their next question when I show them how much reads versus writes their database has. So they've got that. So as a reminder for those of you who joined late, what I'm in the process of doing is writing a blog post about how to analyze whether a database is more read intensive or more write intensive. You don't want to do that with files. You want to do that by analyzing the reads and writes on the individual objects. Okay, so that gives me a pretty good idea there of the details at the table level. Now we're going to zoom out and I'm going to show them how to analyze it at the database overall. So select from, we're going to go from our friend sysdmdb index usage stats, uh, we'll call this US. Uh, we're going to join to, uh, enter, yeah, enter join sys databases db on US. I should have just copy pasted that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a database level view or query uh, group by db name. So db name as database name, and then we'll take the two reads and writes. Then, so this gives us, this will now give us, that's supposed to be a sum, 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 sum. There we go. So this should now give us the number and reads of reads and writes across all of their databases so they can start to make analyzing percent type decisions. Okay, so the next thing the people who run this in production are going to ask is, uh, how do I show that as a percentage? And they may also want to do some formatting, but I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the reader. So I need to do some formatting here. So one way to do it, I want a percentage of reads versus writes. So let's say, well, I'm going to take some, uh, well, I'm going to, oh, this is so beautiful because I'm going to need to handle this situation too. I'm going to need to handle divide by zero errors when I go and write my query. So the first thing that I got to go do is I got to go say, let's say that it was 103 versus 46. How do I calculate a read versus write ratio there? So if I say select 103 divided by 46, Will this give me a percentage and what will the percentage look like? Eh, 223, that doesn't really do it for me. What I really need to do is group the total. I need to add the total together. I need to add these two numbers. Here's my total reads and writes divided by, let's say, 103. Let's see if that will give me a read percentage. Nope, I screwed that up. I always do that backwards. I can never remember which number is supposed to go on top and which number is supposed to go on the bottom when I'm calculating percentages. Woo! Okay, so that'll tell me that the database, this particular database has about 69% 69% reads versus 31% uh, writes. I got to put this as a percentage column inside my query. So let's say, <laughs> Herman says, in SQL Server 2019, we have a new integration with Spark. Someday, if you could create any video, for that, that would be great. I don't use Spark, so, and I, I don't think I ever will. So, got to know your weaknesses and your strengths. So, let's say some, let's add all these together. Copy plus user updates as all activity. So now this gives us the total numbers. Now I got to do my dividing. So now I got to be able to pull that off. So let's say for reads, we're going to say this number. Div oh, you know what I should do is I should do it as a CTE. Oh, yeah, let's do it as a CTE. All right, so let's do it as a CTE. With a CTE, and actually, you know what, I'm going I'm to make this as part of the blog post too. I'm going to say, okay, here's, here's the query that I would regularly start with. Now let's do a CTE and give you percentage totals. So let's say with, uh, with reads and writes as, and paste you in, Do ba -dum -ba -dum. Uh, now select from, reads and writes, RW. Uh, now we, I need to go, so now this is the CTE is going to give me this thing that's down below here. Now I got to go calculate my percentages. So I could say reads, writes. Now I need to get a read percentage. And so if I want to get a read percentage, I would say 
reads divided by all activity as read percent. That's what you think would work, and it doesn't work. So let's go see why it doesn't work. Let's copy that out and execute. So reads is 103. We've done 103 reads against this database. Reads percent is zero. Arr, why am I not getting an accurate number here? I'm not getting an accurate number because both of these are integers. Whenever you divide an integer by an integer in SQL Server, it's just going to come out as an integer. So what I need to do is say something like times 1.0. And I'm going to just put this in on parentheses here so that people who read it understand what I'm doing there. And maybe they won't. Not, not everyone is as smart and good looking as you, dear reader. And see, presto, now I have 0.69. Well, of course, most of my readers are not quite as smart as you, so they're not going to get that that's actually like 69%. So what I need to do is also then take all this and times 100, just so that they get that it's a percentage. So execute that, ta-da! So now reads percent equals 69. Woohoo! That works beautifully. So I like that. Now let's take the same thing for writes. Let's give them a writes percentage, and we'll say writes times all one da, 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 as writes percent. I don't need a comma at the end of there. And how's that look? Ta-da! Um, okay, I, I forgot to get the database name. Let me get that in as well. Database name. Okay, execute. Ta-da! And now we have 69% reads, 30% writes. This is beautiful. Love it. Fantastic. I'm all about it. Okay, so now I think I've got the queries that I need in order to write the blog post. Now I got to go out and actually write the blog post. Nigel says, what's Spark? Uh, Spark is a way for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a really sarcastic answer, and it's not going to work out well for me, so I will stop talking there. Okay, uh, so let's now go write the blog post. So I got my, now the other thing is neat with this, when I'm, when I'm writing myself, what I'll usually do is I'll write out the scripts just like I did just now, and then I'll also take the screenshots too before I go and write the blog post. So let's do that. So let's go say, let's go see. So let's go write, do the select star from index usage stats. Let's give them a screenshot of that. Now I use, uh, because I'm on a Mac, I use the built-in screenshotting tool on a Mac. So this will give me uh, roughly what I'm looking for there. And now let's go get, here's this fancy pants query. I'll put a semicolon on the end just because I want to make sure that People think that I'm a good developer, even though I'm really not. Um, why is YouTube not letting me? Um, <laughs> Thuperman. Thuperman says, uh, should I create indexes on a two billion row table in my data warehouse database? Um, but it depends. Do you want it to go fast? Maybe you don't. Some people don't. Some people don't want, some people want their queries to go really slow. Uh, Okay, so there's that, that query, and then execute. Now, I'm, I'm being facetious, of course, the, the Thuperman, because there are times when you should create indexes, there are times when you should not, but in this video, that's just not what I'm trying to illustrate, so I'm going to leave that aside as a general something else question that you could go hire a consultant for. I wonder where you could find a consultant. I just don't know. All right, so there's uh, my screenshots, including my date notes. That's not, I need one more, because i got to get this with reads versus writes. Get the full CTE, make sure that goes into the entire screenshot, and execute that. Whoops. Execute that, and then give them a screenshot of that whole thing, and copy that out. There we go. Okay, so now I got all my screenshots. Now it's time to write the blog post. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to copy paste all my code out. Uh, actually, I'll hold off on copy pasting the code. So now let's go into WordPress. Now, I bet somewhere inside here I have a browser with WordPress open. I do. Okay. So let's go add a post. So for those of you who've never seen WordPress before, this may be an interesting uh, exercise too as well. You'll get to see what it's like to go create uh, blog posts. 
Uh, Colotuber says, are you expensive? It all depends on what the problem is. <laughs> with some problems, I look very inexpensive compared to what the problem is, like those of you with 64 80 core SQL servers. As a reminder, SQL Server licensing is $7,000 US per core. So on an 80 core server, it costs half a million dollars just for the licensing, just for the licensing, not even the hardware or the storage or anything like that. So when you have a half million dollar piece of licensing and it's running slow, a human being could be really pricey, but still look very inexpensive if it makes it go fast. It's also why, just a side piece of career advice, if you want to make a lot of money, you're better off working on paid stuff than free stuff. Because if the database server is free, so if it's all totally open source, the hardware is cheap, no one's going to pay you a lot of money to fix it. People who work on Yugos, people who work on you know old beat up cars where there's not a lot of demand and they're relatively free cars, they don't make a lot of money. Ferrari mechanics make a lot of money. Porsche mechanics make a lot of money. That's how you make more money is you work on expensive stuff. So let's see here. So how do so the, how do you choose a blog post title is a whole separate thing that I could just probably spend two or three webcasts on. Um, so I could say how can I tell if, or how can you, how can I tell if my database is, database is read heavy or heavy, how can I measure, how can I measure uh, if my database does more reads than writes? That really could spend a whole like hour just talking through how I'm going to pick a title for this. And this probably won't be the final title when it goes live. I'll do a lot of thinking about that, but let's just get it started at least to go uh, from there. So in here, I'm going to call this performance tuning. I think I'm going to call this performance tuning. I may call it, actually, I may call it production database administration. Um, so if you need to know, okay, personally, I have a hard time when I'm on a broadcast, I have a hard time typing without saying what I'm typing. So I apologize for that. I know you're not going to be happy with that as I'm talking, as I go through and type, but so that or we listen to music together. And then if I put a copyrighted piece of music on here, I get yanked off of YouTube. So we know how that's going to go. Uh, when someone asks you, is this database read intensive or write intensive? You probably think of a lot of ways to measure it. Uh, look at sys dmdb. Oh, what is it? It's dmio virtual file stats. Uh, sys dmio virtual, yeah, that's it. dmio virtual file stats. So I'll copy paste that URL DMIO virtual file stats to measure the file activity. But, and I'm not going to do that as a bullet point. I'm going to say you might, you might look, you could look at sys DMIO virtual file stats, put the link inside there. But that isn't really correct. After all, your users run a lot of queries all day that are simply satisfied from the buffer pool. SQL Server caches your data, so it doesn't have to hit the disks. But if you want to, those are reads, right? Right? Get it? There's a better, and instead of, you probably, there's a better way, measure each index to see which, not measure, there's a better way. SQL Server is constantly tracking how many reads and writes each index gets. Uh, to do do do. Nigel says you could floor your percentages. Yeah, you know, the problem is when you're writing a blog post like this, I already have a wall of code. Let me go back and show you the CTE. I already have a wall of code. And for people who don't know the answer to this question, the people who are hitting this blog post to, to get the answer from the title, they're already going to be intimidated by this wall of code that probably hits a DMV that they're not familiar with. Nigel, I'm with you in that if it was my code that I was going to run uh, on a regular basis to get the answer, I would do stuff like floor it. 
And I would floor it as a Porsche driver. I actually do floor it. But in my attempts to get this thing knocked out inside less than the span of half an hour, I want to minimize the number of things that I have to go explain. But I love that thought, Nigel. I'm, I'm with you in that it works really well. <laughs> Daniel Hutmacher says, watch Brent blog queries. That was like my exact idea here was to go, all right, watch the work that's involved in building out one of these uh, blog posts. Uh, you can query sys dm db uh, what are they uh, index usage stats and sys dm db index operational stats whoops operational stats um, in this blog post i'm going to choose the former because it's a little easier to write about for the differences between those two and which one you should use when, hit this module of mastering index tuning. And so I have a module in mastering index tuning, that class that just goes about the differences between those two DMVs. So I'll copy that into there. I uh, hit this module of mastering index tuning. Boom. Um, I always like to link to the books online pages for DMVs because it's a nice jumping off place for people who haven't used uh, that DMV before. Also because the DMV uh, documentation these days is really good. They've done a great job of really beefing up documentation over time. I say they being Microsoft. I, you know, I bash Microsoft sometimes, but I, I will be the first person to give them credit when credit is due. It's fantastic. Francisco says that 30 minute hourglass thing hack is life changing, by the way. I'm glad you think so. I, it's funny, I used to talk about it in my mastering classes and I was amazed by how many students pick it up and ran with it. So I'm like, oh, I should blog about that thing uh, too. Okay, so for the differences between which are, so here's the DMV, or here's, here are the contents of sys DM, DB index usage stats on my lab server. And now I'm gonna drag the screenshot in. So I'm gonna get the first uh, screenshot that we're working with. The, the Mac built-in screenshot tool names things with kind of cheesy names, just screenshot date and time. Theoretically, you can get better search engine optimization if you accurately name your screenshots. So I'm just going to take a minute to go through and name these. So this is sys dmdb, well, we'll put the period in, dmdb index usage stats. And it does say, yeah, uh, copy that out. Let's see, what's this one? Joined to tables. And this is grouped by database, and then this one is with percentages. Okay, so the first one that I'm doing is here. Let's go drag her in. And alignment, none, link to media file, 600 by any. Okay, so here's the contents of this on my lab server. Um, that's a good start because it shows seek, scans, lookups, and up, oops, Oxford comma, and updates. But we, we're only seeing database, object, and index IDs. You, dear reader, probably want a little more data about which databases and tables we're looking at, so here you go. Now, I'm gonna give them one of the queries. I'm gonna give them the query that joins out to all of the tables, copy, and get this in here, paste, and add. So now they have a little T-SQL that they can get started with. Here are my results. But keep in mind that my, well, so actually I'll just start there. Do, 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 here are my results. And then paste that in, do, 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 insert into post. Uh, those are not my results. Are they not my results? No, I didn't execute the query. Ah, golly. All right, so let's go back and execute the query. I just, all I did was highlight it. I don't think I actually ran it. Execute, 
Okay, that's better. Now that will actually help me tell that story there that I haven't had much activity yet on this server. Uh, so perfect. Let's go back and get that. Copy, delete you, and in a second, there that goes. Get this around here, drag and drop the artwork out, and insert into post. Oops, we have our first problem. See, in my, as I, or I'll just say, as I was writing this post, I booted up my lab VM for the first time today. It's a bright eyed 6 14 a.m. Pacific as I write this, being watched by countless strangers. Uh, Tuperman says, Oh dear God, Microsoft, where are you, when are you going to put in SSMS multiple result sets? You can do multiple result sets in SSMS. You can run multiple queries at once. Uh, so, for example, here I can just highlight these two queries and boom, you get two result sets. See, to Hooperman, the more you learn. Ha <laughs> Drew says, Drew says, uh, worst unboxing video ever. I agree. Um, Drew does point out, Drew works for Microsoft in fairness. Uh, Drew does point out that the documentation is open source. This is another awesome thing about Microsoft these days. You, you can, at the bottom of any books online page, you can put in your comments, you can do a pull request to improve the documentation, which I know some people are like, why would I do free work for Microsoft? I'm like, because you have to go back and read the documentation too. Same reason that I write blog posts, I'm doing this stuff for free. Samita says, wow, you uh, type as fast as you speak. I type even faster when I'm not being watched. That's the problem. Uh, being watched by countless strangers. Okay. Uh, because my database only has activity in a couple of tables, these numbers only reflect a couple of, whoops, couple of tables. However, in terms of measuring reads versus writes, I only really want to know about tables that have had recent activity, so these numbers will work just fine for me. Now, next, uh, I probably want to group this data together by database. So here's, here's a query for that. Let's go copy paste that query out. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, copy. Actually, I'm not even going to give them the intermediate query. That I don't know that I'm, that really makes sense. Let's just copy this out. Copy with the CTE. Copy. Oh, you know, I should really order that by database name. Uh, da, 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 da. Order by, oh, you know what they're going to want. Uh, screw them. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the reader. Uh, I know what they're going to say is somebody's going to say, I, and especially because you are watching this here live, you're going to go and comment on this blog post whenever it goes live. Um, you're going to say, oh my God, I want it totaled together by server, at which point I'm going to say that is left as an exercise for the reader. Um, T. Huberman says tabs. T. T. Huberman, I'm glad you said that because I, I really try to be good normally about that and I'm glad you caught it because um, I did it here and I didn't do it down here. T. Huberman, I, like, I would give you a prize for that. Normally I would give you some kind of animated prize or whatever. Thank you for catching that. I need to do that here instead of, I'm so ingrained with two tabs for the from and the order by, but I need to do that better. And so the the people out there are doubtlessly going, hey, Brent, well, I'm in team spaces. What's the problem with using spaces? The problem with using spaces is that people with uh, screen readers, people who are differently abled and who use a screen reader to read blog posts, code, etc., spaces don't work as well as tabs. So as soon as somebody, I used to be 100% team spaces until somebody told me about that they used a screen reader for their code. And I was like, okay, I'm done here. I, it makes perfect sense. You win. It's tabs all the way for me. So let's give them that. Uh, so I've run it. Let's go copy it out. I'm going to put it in the blog post, but I also have to get the screenshot of this. So let's give them the screenshot. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to jump, drop my font size down. Normally I use this for presenting, but when I'm doing the screenshot, since people are going to be looking at it online, this will be a little bit easier for them to see. Copy that out. Okay, there that goes. Uh, da -da -da -da. Someone left a comment and I can't see it now on Facebook. That's weird how that works. Show me all the comments. Facebook's not doing it. Okay, so much for that, wherever. 
Uh, let's come back over here and let's give them the query for that. Paste and add. And then let's show what the screenshot looks like. There's this. So this is doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, grouped by database. And that'll give them, whoop, whoop. Oh, I already have that. Oh, there we go. Boom and boom. And there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Here, uh, we'll just say voila. And then dump that out down there. And insert into post. Uh, I'll even say in there, some of you are doubtlessly going to say, hey, Brent. Hey, Bert. <laughs> See, I'll use your, uh, whoever that was, Devendra? I think it was Devendra. Hey, Bert. Uh, uh, I need this gr um, rounded to two decimal places and totaled across the entire server. Please do my job for me, to which I will reply, I am busy making coffee. Please do the needful. Um, in, in return or instead, I'm going to give you a video of me writing this very blog post. Enjoy. All right, so there's that. I have the queries. Let's set the featured image just so that I got that in in WordPress and I think I am good to go. Okay, cool. So that gives you a rough idea. We went a little bit over half an hour. It gives you a rough idea of what it's like to bang out a blog post when you know going in um, here's roughly what I want to talk about. The way that I prefer to do it is I go to write the demo scripts first because that helps me tell the story. The other thing that I'll go do is I'm now going to set this as a draft for the future. I'm going to schedule this for the future in WordPress because what I inevitably do is I'll come back later and I'll want to add things or change things. Like I'm going to add more information links down at the bottom. I try to give usually people something else to do down at the bottom where they can go take their learning journey elsewhere because if they found this post interesting, I may want to give them several other places to go learn more. There we go. There's your morning education. You can feel good that you got something done productive this morning. Now go uh, knock it out. I will see you all later. Adios, everybody. Where's the off button? <laughs>